You know, I've filmed this video four times now. Usually for my YouTube channel, I can make three videos in a day without a problem. But I feel really passionate about this subject. And I want to make sure that I say everything just right. And I lay out all the facts. And I don't know if I'm going to do that in this video just to the perfect, perfect extent that I want it to be done. But I need to go ahead and do it because these horses need help and they don't have any time to lose. This video is about the big lick practices in some Tennessee walking horse shows. I went to my first Tennessee walking horse show that offered big lick classes this past weekend and I was horrified. I saw horses as young as two years old being pushed in massive shank bits with sharp rowel spurs with huge heavy blocks on their feet chains around their ankles with fully grown size riders my question is when did they start these horses under saddle in utero i don't know <laughs> You know what my horse was doing when he was two years old? Behind the scenes, not at horse shows, but in private, horses are being soared. That means they're having chemicals put on their legs to make them overreact when they walk. They are being abused. They are being harmed. They are being taken advantage of. Chemicals such as gasoline, copper tox, mustard oil are being applied to the horse's legs, causing permanent damage, physical and emotional. These horses are being taken advantage of because they're so sweet and docile by nature. When I was watching this horse show, I thought to myself, this is the easiest crap anyone could ever do. This isn't riding. This certainly isn't horsemanship. Anyone can sit there on a horse while it goes round and round as fast as it can go and just hold on to that massive shank bit for their balance. When trainers, riders, and owners start putting such insane auxiliary equipment and training tools on their horses, it's no longer riding and training. It's abuse and it's domination over a helpless animal. The main problem here is that there's no main governing body that holds trainers, riders, and owners accountable. There are lots of different smaller organizations that have their own beliefs that believe that big lit classes shouldn't be allowed. They showcase their horses as they are naturally or regularly shod like we're used to seeing. But some organizations, like the horse show that I attended this past weekend, do allow big lit classes. These organizations are the problem. In the industry of the Tennessee walking horses, no one's being held accountable. And behind the scenes and in private, it's a free-for-all. What can you do to your horse to make him step higher and more dramatically so that you can win your 50 cent ribbon? These horses don't even look like horses anymore. They look like carousel creatures. They look fake. And they look scared to death. I don't understand how anyone can think this is appealing, but they do. The big lick practices, the big lick classes have a huge following, lots of supporters. The show that I was at probably had a thousand people there and they were all cheering for these classes. <laughs> Look at the 
this horse's feet. Tell me there isn't going to be some kind of permanent damage done to his body. This is not natural. This is not right. Having these horses endure all of this for what? asking me oh I thought I thought big lick was was outlawed I thought it was illegal no big lick classes are not illegal what is illegal is soaring what's also illegal is speeding while driving a car there are inspection sites for these big lick classes but it can be a very intimidating environment I heard from a vet recently who was an inspector and she can attest to this the supporters of the Big Lake horses clearly grew up thinking that the practices were normal and they truly believe that they're not causing harm to the horses. He was lovely. He was made like that. He's fine. He was fine. He didn't have yeah. blocks on his feet. They're not blocks, they're uh, plastic pads. Plastic pads on his feet. Yes. That don't weigh, any more. It doesn't weigh any more than okay. my watch does. Okay. Doesn't weigh any more than okay. my watch does. Okay. You get the tail to stick up like that. It weighs like the same thing as your watch does. How do you get his tail to stick up like that? To the oh, weight of him. I got that on video. How do you get her Six tail? Six ounces. I got that on video. And it's true. She's right. Ten pounds is nothing compared to the weight and the strength of a horse. But let me ask you this. Why is it that when I'm not wearing a watch, I walk like this, and then when I go to put my watch on, why is it that I'm not walking like that? It makes no sense. If the horse that's wearing these stacks and these chains are not bothered or affected, why does it make such a dramatic difference in the way that he's moving? Hyperextending his legs, sitting so far down on his hind end that his fetlocks are touching the ground. I don't get it. These horses did not choose this type of lifestyle. You can see it in their faces. They all look terrified. And what about the backyard type of trainers that don't go to these big championship shows, but they're still trying to copy what they see in these classes? What measures are they going to to make their horses step higher and faster? You can find all kinds of horrible videos online. Horses laying down in their stalls in agony, having chemicals poured on their legs while they're in pain. I'm not gonna show that here in this video, but you can see the damage that has been done permanently to discolor the horse's legs. The inspectors that look at these big lick horses are palpating their legs to check for pain and for reaction. But why is it, if soaring is illegal, why is it that this horse's legs are not the same color as the rest of his body? What's that all about? When trainers have to start adding auxiliary training devices to this extreme, it's no longer riding. And it's certainly not horsemanship. It's domination over a helpless creature. The equestrian community is a tight-knit group of passionate animal lovers with strong personalities. But we have a moral duty to tell each other when we've crossed the line. Don't just believe what you've been taught, but think critically, logically, and do your own research. Our horses are amazing and powerful, but they're silent. We must be their voices. I'm asking each and every one of you to help me in the Big Lick practices. If you would like to help in ending Big Lick practices so that the Tennessee Walking Horse can be shown for its natural beauty, I will leave contact information below this video and hopefully these barbaric classes will come to an end. We must pressure, protest, and petition the facilities that host Big Lick classes. We must demand higher standards of the USDA. Don't be silent. Share this video with other equestrians for the love of the horse.